Hello class, this is the second video uh, for uh, the last part of the conflict chapter uh, in the Woods textbook. And uh, this video uh, will spend just a brief amount of time talking about unproductive conflict communication. There are two different uh, stages or, or types of conflict communication. Uh, the first is uh, unproductive conflict and the second one is productive conflict. So let's talk about uh, some of the different stages that you encounter in both of those. All conflicts involve a beginning, a middle, and an end. And in this brief video, I'm going to talk to you about those six different stages. Uh, productive conflict versus unproductive conflict, and conflict as seen in three specific phases, the beginning, middle, and end. Let's begin with unproductive conflict. Each conflict begins in a specific way. And as we talked about earlier in the chapter, there's a definition that basically says that it's a, a disagreement uh, about a particular issue uh, where both parties feel the need to resolve that particular issue. That resolution can take a, a number of forms, as we talked about, in terms of win-win, win-lose, and lose-lose conflict orientations when, when we talked about the earlier part of the chapter. The early, pay, early stages in unproductive conflict uh, involve cross-complaining and uh, someone says something uh, a cross-complaint occurs when one person's complaint is met, met by a counter-complaint. Uh, the example that the text uses is really good. Shannon uh, could respond to John's request for more time by saying yeah well uh, what I want is a little more respect for what I do. That response doesn't adjust, uh, address John's concern. So if you voice something that you're upset about and then the other person says well you're upset about that uh, I'm upset about this then essentially you've got either a win-lose or a lose-lose orientation to conflict rather than one person saying oh you're upset about that well what can we do to solve that uh, the other person brings up an entirely new argument and uh, the conflict kind of escalates uh, from there that's called cross complaining and uh, once one side or the other starts cross-complaining, uh, the, the grievance that was just aired uh, on the part of the first part in the, in, of, the, of the conflict uh, is not going to go anywhere. And once that entire process of cross-complaining begins, uh, it's very easy to kind of switch into the second phase of unproductive conflict or the middle phase of unproductive, uh, unproductive conflict, which is kitchen sinking. In kitchen sinking, uh, people throw essentially every argument uh, out there. Uh, if one person says, I'm concerned about this, and the other person says, oh yeah, well, I'm concerned about this, and then that first person says, oh, you're concerned about that? Well, here's 15 things that I'm concerned about, and uh, you know, while we're at it, let's talk about your family, and let's talk about money, and let's talk about raising kids. And let's talk about uh, your automobile and uh, you know the fact that you never wash it or clean it or change your oil. Uh, let's talk about all these other things. Uh, once that kitchen sinking uh, comes in, and the text defines it as, as throwing literally everything into the conflict, inclu including the kitchen sink. Um, once that begins, uh, you can oftentimes get to a point in a conflict or in an argument where you forget what the original thing that you were fighting about was. And you know one of you might even say to the other, what were we fighting about to begin with? You know, what, what started our argument? And uh, if that is the case, you've, you've really gone a long way down the rabbit hole of unproductive conflict. And once those emotions flare and those tempers get going, uh, it may be really challenging uh, to even come back from and repair the damage that's been done to the relationship once you get to the point of kitchen sinking. This oftentimes happens when people do not engage in the voice response and don't uh, air uh, slights, don't air things that have been hurting their feelings for a long time. Uh, if you gunny sack all of that, uh, which is uh, what we talked about uh, as unproductive communication behavior where you just kind of put all of those hurts uh, into a, a gunny sack and you don't ever get them out, uh, then you indeed have a, a number of problems and uh, those problems can result in huge, huge kitchen sinking episodes uh, that are very, very damaging to the relationship and can cause uh, a lot of problems. So we reviewed the early stage uh, where we talked about cross-complaining. We uh, talked about kitchen sinking. Let's talk about the third phase of unproductive conflict, and that's the latter stages. Uh, each person's proposal to solve the conflict tends to be met by a counter-proposal. Uh, so someone might say, well, I'll do a better job <clears throat> taking out the trash and remembering to change the liner out uh, if you will do a better job uh, doing the dishes. Um, 
that's kind of counter proposaling. Uh, one person says, well, how about I do this to solve the problem? And then the other person says, well, how about you do this uh, to, solve the, <clears throat> to solve a different problem? Uh, they're not engaging in uh, mutual contracting uh, about that one particular issue. Uh, so there's not going to be a resolution. They're not coming to a, a productive resolution about one particular issue and then putting that to the side and then tackling the next issue that's been brought up. It's best just to argue about one uh, issue at a time and to avoid cross-complaining and counter-proposing. Uh, cross-complaining leads to kitchen sinking. Kitchen sinking leads to counter-proposing. All of those are essentially unproductive conflict. The uh, text, I think, does a really good job talking about how this cycle you know, kind of triggers itself there in the last little part uh, of the section on unproductive conflict. And I, I'd like to read that to you. Um, Negative communication leads to self perpetuate leads to uh, a, a pattern that can be self perpetuating. It can trigger a domino effect of negative outcomes. Egocentrism leads to poor listening, which promotes disconfirmation, which fuels defensiveness, which stokes dogmatism, which leads to hostile mind reading and kitchen sinking, which pave the way for uh, self summarizing. Each negative form of communication feeds into an overall negative system. Unproductive communication fosters a defensive, negative climate, which makes it almost impossible to resolve conflicts, confirm the individuals, or nurture the relationships. So uh, we talked about some unproductive uh, forms of conflict. Let's uh, transition there and talk about uh, how, how we should argue with one another. Uh, in the early stages, and again, there's a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. In the early stages, uh, the foundation of constructive management of conflict is established long before the specific disagreement is aired. And we talked uh, in the previous chapter about communication climate. If you can remember those suggestions about uh, positive communication climates and be spontaneous, be provisional, be uh, proactive with each other, engage in the voice response, look for win-win uh, types of orientations, then you're going to notice uh, pretty immediately uh, that the next fight that you have with your significant other or with a friend, the next conflict that you engage in is, is going to be more productive. Uh, in the middle, uh, in the early stages, you begin with uh, a, uh, a foundation of a positive communication climate. In the middle stages, uh, you should be able to engage in bracketing. And when one or the other of you brings up a new argument, uh, you should say, hey, we're not really fighting about that right now. If you want to have a discussion about that later, I'd be happy to talk to you about that later. But let's resolve this issue that we're looking at right now. Let's not get uh, too many pots on the stove or too many irons in the fire when it comes to this. And that's a really good way uh, to bracket the conflict into specific areas and to not move on to the next issue until you've been able to work that issue all the way through. So positive communication climate, engage in bracketing, work that issue until there's a, a mutually beneficial resolution. So let's talk about how to get to that mutually beneficial re re uh, orientation towards the, the or resolution to the conflict. The last stage of conflict, uh, the third stage that I want to talk to you about in productive conflict, uh, the latter stage, you will engage in contracting. And uh, contracting is basically where you say, uh, I didn't know uh, that when I behaved uh, this way, it made you feel this way. I'm sorry uh, that I disconfirmed you. Why don't I try to do a better job? doing X and uh, hopefully that will uh, lead to you feeling better about that situation. Will you help remind me uh, when uh, I engage uh, in something that we've talked about and uh, maybe uh, if you will gently remind me uh, about that uh, and in a, in a, in a provisional and, and positive tone, uh, I will do my best to rectify that situation. So you engage in the positive conflict, you resolve the issue, you work it all the way through uh, the different stages. Uh, in the next video, uh, I'll talk about uh, some conflict management skills and strategies. Thanks.